Rub up your engines! Before you change your vehicle's transmission fluid, you should watch this video because you might use the wrong fluid, you might change it incorrectly, and you might not even want to change it at all. Now the first thing I want to do is dispel the myth that modern automatic transmission fluids never need to be changed because they're lifetime fluids, load of bunk. If you ask a modern engineer, they'll say, oh, it's got lifetime fluid. The fluid's good for the lifetime of the transmission. But let's say your transmission warranty is 60,000 miles. If it breaks after that, they don't care. They'll sell you another car or another transmission. Take my old Celica. It's got like 240,000 miles on it. I change the fluid every 60,000 miles. It still runs fine. If it would have broken at 60,000 miles, I would have strangled somebody. But let's say you were a bad boy or girl, never changed the fluid and you got 180,000 miles on it now. If you do change the fluid and filter at that mileage and it's never been touched, a lot of times the transmission will start slipping or it won't work at all. So you want to do it regularly. If it's too far gone, pray it lasts as long as possible. Now this particular vehicle is a 2015 Toyota Sienna. I advise changing it every 60,000 miles or so. And as you can see, he's got 77,000 miles on it. And he's never changed it, but it is a Toyota. That's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. So we'll start with the obvious. Let's look for the dipstick. Well, it's got an oil dipstick, but there is no transmission dipstick on this. Toyota followed all the other fools that got rid of the dipstick, Mazda did it ages ago. It's a stupid design, but that's the way it is. So you got to deal with what you have. They're great vehicles. A little glitchy design. Here's how you do the fluid yourself. First, you jack the vehicle up in the air. You want to jack it so the wheel's up in the air. Then get a big old jack stand. And since changing fluids generally a dirty job, putting on these work gloves. They're fantastic. They're collar length. So you really don't get anything dirty. Now to see what you're doing, it's a lot easier taking the tire off. Well, I guess right the second time. Around and around and around it goes. There. Now once you get under here, there's the drain plug right there. The drain pan under there. This one is the six millimeter hex head. So we'll put it on the end of a ratchet. They're on pretty tight, so you gotta pull pretty hard. But eventually, uh, it breaks loose. Then we can just do it by fingers and drain it in the pan. And there it goes. If you notice, there's only a little bit in here because there's a trick. And that's it. You get a long six millimeter hex. You reach inside. And there's a piece in here that we got to take out. Now you can see why I'm wearing gloves. We keep screwing it. You can see it's starting to come out. And once we get it out, you'll see what happens. There comes the bulk of the fluid. I'll take this piece out. You won't get much of the fluid out. But realize, even when you take this out, only a small percentage of the fluid actually comes out. That's why it's a good idea to change it every all oh, 40, 50,000 miles because you want to get most of the dirt out. And if you keep changing it, that'll keep it clean. There's still a lot of old fluid in it, but it's pretty good fluid. Now I never ever advise flushing these things out. You could have all kinds of problems. That's why it's a good idea every 40, 50,000 miles or so, change the fluid you're changing maybe one third of the fluid that's in there. But it's very good, highly refined fluid that if you do that, you're gonna get most of the crud out. And of course, the bolts on the bottom, any of the sludge in here is gonna come out. Now it's never gonna stop dripping completely. So when it's almost done like this, then you screw this in flush and realize it's a plastic piece. You don't wanna break it so. Once you feel it bottoming out like this, just give it a tiny little bit. That's good enough. You can reuse the gasket as long as it's clean. They last a long time. You want to do it finger tight. Finish it off with the ratchet so it doesn't leak. But since there's no dipstick at all, how do you put it back in? Well, you got to take this crap off. That's why we took the wheel off. We got to take this plastic stuff off. This one bolts off. Kind of rusty. Been sitting there a while. Woo, yeah, that thing's on there tight. I still can't even turn it with my fingers. Either there, I'm getting weak. There. Now this is those stupid plastic things. You push them in, hear them click. Then hope he should come off, at least in theory. <laughs> I did. And there's the fill plug right there, which happens to be 24 millimeters. Now these can be often stinkers to get off, so I got a long little extension bar here. That got it loose. Now the next question is, what kind of fluid to use? Well, you can always go get the dealer one, you know, they're gonna have the right one for it. But in this case, if you look it up, it says it takes Toyota WS 
Well, I've been using Valvoline for a while. When you look at the back. And as you can see here, it says Toyota Lexus, blah, 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 WS. So this works for the WS. Now, since it has no dipstick, how do you know how much to put back in? Well, this one's easy because it's my son's car. It's never been touched. It's got the right amount of fluid in to begin with. But you want to look at the transmission first. As you can see, this baby's bone dry. It's not leaking. If it's leaked out, then it's going to be a real job trying to figure out how much to put in. So if you think your transmission's low on fluid, you want to pay a mechanic to do this job. I got special tools for measuring the temperature of the transmission. Go through a whole series of nonsensical things to make sure it's filled correctly. But if the transmission's dry, especially if you're the original owner, all you got to do is this. Here's what came out of the transmission. Now sure, it's a pain. And I yearn for the olden days too, when you could have a dipstick to measure it, but that's what they've all gone through. So, you get a bottle, do it in a bucket, so if you spill some, you won't make a mess. See how much comes out. Let's check it, see if it's starting to get full. That's 700 milliliters, so we'll pour this in here and measure the rest. Because now I know it won't spill, because there's less than a quart left. And we measured the rest, 650 milliliters, so that's 1,350 milliliters. Now the bottle's 946, so we'll put in a whole bottle. And we'll use this handy dandy pump. We'll just stick one end in here, nice how it fits in. That goes in there. And the other end of the pump goes in here, and we'll pump it all out. Yeah, as you can see, starting to flow. Then when this one's empty, then we'll just pour 404 milliliters back in here to fill it up. That's where these clear bottles come in handy. You can pour the right amount in. My advice is don't get a full one and guess. Empty some of the full one out. Get it till it's at the right amount you need. So when you pump it, you just pump it till it's empty. And you don't guess and accidentally put too much in. And we'll get back to pumping here. These are handy little pumps. They don't cost much and they work great. I got this one at AutoZone. Works perfectly fine. Now you notice some of the fluid is dripping out. That's another way to show you that it's full. When it starts dripping out, it's full. So we measured it correctly. And stick it on here. First, we'll get it finger tight. It's already got the gasket. You can use it over. It's an aluminum gasket. They basically last forever. Then get your big old bar. Stick it on. But once you finally get it on, then uh, 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 nice and tight so it won't come off. Don't worry about getting it off next time because with this giant bar, it will always snap off. Put this plastic thing back on. And what you do is you push these. So they set back out. Now they're set for going in. So, you can just line them up. They go in a hole when you twist them. And then when you push it, it snaps in place. Same thing with the bottom one. You gotta do a little twisting sometimes to get them in a hole. Because they're old and brittle. There we go. And then you push it, locked in place. Of course, this should tighten up with a wrench. Once you get it finger tight. Then don't forget to put the wheel back on. There's always one missing. It always happens that way. And now... We'll get them on snug with this. But you don't want to use the impact wrench to put it together. Just use it to take it apart. You need a torque wrench to do it right. Now, you're taking a jack stand out. And we'll get our torque wrench. In this case, it's about 75 pounds. So we'll go to our 70, one, two, three, four, uh, five. And we'll let it down. And now we'll finish the job correctly so the wheels are on right. You just keep turning it till it clicks. There's one, you go opposite sides. Two, three, four. Always double check your work. There, and it's done. Now realize this 2015 Sienna has a six speed automatic transmission, a conventional automatic transmission. Many cars these days have CVT transmissions and those constantly variable transmissions, it's even more important that they have their fluid changed regularly. If I owned one, but I don't, but if I did, I would change the fluid every 30,000 miles. You can see, it's not a hard job to do. I would much rather spend the time to do that every 30,000 miles than to have the transmission go out. Take a Nissan Jetco automatic transmission, those are horrendous. If you don't change it, they'll come apart faster. They'll probably break anyways, but at least you get longer life if you change the fluid in them. So now you know the truth about automatic transmission fluid changing. So you can take care of your car and make it last as long as possible. And believe me, do it yourself. I've met people who paid shops to do it, and they either did it wrong or didn't even change the fluid. Do it yourself, do it right. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!